Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Um, I mentioned a couple of videos ago that I didn't get the chart from Starrett and it finally came. I uh, was concerned as it's kind of bent, so, but I figured <laughs> this is why you guys saw me go and create an account on the Starrett website, log in, and there's a place we click to get a free. Um, what do you call it? Calendar for uh, decimal conversions, taps, things like that. And it came from Quad Graphics. So, but um, it was cool. So I was concerned it was going to get bent, but I guess it was in a safe spot, so it's not really going to get bent. Um, I'll find some wall space for this. All right. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, the Noga knockoff. One of the last video or the video before that I said it was easy but not so easy to make and the reason it's easy is because you can see it's just simple machining making here or there. The reason it's not so easy is everybody knows I've got the whole um, ER32 Imperial and Metric Collet set and every one of those pieces was a unique size. It's not stock half inch, quarter inch, three quarter, whatever. So. I went through about seven different collets to hold everything to be able to make that, turn it, chamfer, thread it, all that stuff. So, what else we have? Two um, comments that were made to me from a good machinist friend. One is when he was talking about this new end mill that I showed um, that you can tighten the collet up and then put a dial indicator on each flute, turn it backwards, and you can actually tap the end mill itself to get zero run out. I'm not sure exactly why, because I'm figuring you're just going to be tilting it is all. So the bottom or wherever you have the dial indicator is going to have zero run out. But I'm pretty sure it's tilted and I'm not sure what the significance of that is for. Uh, the other thing that was said, I went through a big long thing on change gears on the mini lathe and how to mesh them. And he said, uh, for all the machines, big, small, medium, just use a piece of newspaper. You put newspaper over the teeth of the gears and you push them together and you tighten them down and that's it. They're meshed. So that sounds like it's a really good technique. I like that. Um, Robert McDowell. Um, we've been contacting, he's a local guy, turns out he's right here, pretty close to the shop. And he's watched uh, the video on unboxing the mini lathe and so on, and where I said, when you get it, just tear it apart. So he tore it completely down, and he's in the phase of slowly putting it back together. But he found on eBay this little gadget, it's kind of pricey, I think it was $96, $98. A little gadget with springs and stuff that will fix uh, run out or problems with the saddle. So I'm waiting to see that and to hear firsthand, and I'll come back and review it as to what it does and how it works because it looks pretty neat actually. So let me know. Well, we'll be in contact, Rob. Um, videos. Um, I'm going to show what is it? One, two, three, four. Four little short videos here. First one, um, I always said, you know, you just go on eBay and you'll find stuff directly out of China for nothing. So the first one is I did buy the other knurling wheel, the straight one, uh, which is a one millimeter pitch. And so I'll show that. And it was just a few dollars. Um, I did, uh, I'll talk about it. I did buy directly from uh, Grizzly and SCLR holder, yeah, SCLR, CR, um, for different inserts so I get into the 60 degree, no, it's 80 degree diamond inserts and start comparing those and how those work. Um, we're going to do another quick little piece here on a uh, grooving tool that I bought from Amazon. And then um, I'll do uh, 
fixed surface gauge that I showed a long time ago from Grizzly that was not flat. Um, friend had a surface grinder, it came out superb. So I'll just show what it looks like, but thank you my friend. <laughs> I finally have a surface gauge that's worth something. It's actually the best one I've got right now. And then after this video, um, I'm going to do just two other follow-up video. Well, this is 88, maybe 89. So I'm going to do two more. One is just going to be a power supply review for a ham shack, and I'll talk about that. And then I'm going to do a camera review for the stereoscope. So here comes the short little videos. All right, like I was saying before, you just order stuff from China. You don't know what you're going to get. I did order these guys. It was shown as 0.5 millimeter pitch. This is the straight, and they look pretty nice. They were really greased up, oiled up. So cleaning them down, and they said 0.5 millimeter pitch, which is not really right. But with the new um, stereoscope, it is so easy to just count these guys off, and it turns out there's 118, so that's the pitch. But this um, this was under four dollars to get this guy, and I did try it. I didn't have anything because the wheels are bigger. This is the uh, the scissor knurl that I've got it's for this size, so they're not going to fit. I'm going to have to build another arm. But I shoved one of these guys in the uh, in the knurling tool that came with the Harbor Freight post, uh, quick change post. You can kind of see it here. I don't know. But it looked, it came out nice. So I'm pretty happy with that. Four dollars or so. And I've got that. Um, on these guys, I just kind of show you guys so you can see. I was saying because this says HSS that this is high speed steel. I'm pretty sure this is cobalt. This was the one that I, um, you guys saw in the last video cutting. And a comment was made, try this on steel. I've already used this quite a bit on different aluminum projects. And I'm thrilled to death with the finishes. This, this is incredible. Um, and I don't see one single sign of wear on it. Looks still brand new. So as long as I'm thrilled with this on aluminum, I'm not about to try this on any steel. And this guy, i probably try this guy on steel. But I know it's this is cobalt. Pretty sure this is cobalt, but we'll see. I'm not sure what to do for more coverage on this or the others, but I gave you guys the place to go. And I didn't really do that much justice to this thing um, in that video, but I love this. I am so nice. All right, I got this guy I had ordered from Grizzly. Um, packaged it like crazy and Grizzly too I wanted to buy this to be able to do a demo um, on some inserts and they wanted what was it like seven eight dollars shipping I phoned up their customer service and I said I'd love to get this SCLR insert holder to demo can you guys send it to me for free and they said no and I said well forget it because I don't want to pay that much for shipping, it's ridiculous. And they gave me a place to go on their website where I got a $25 shipping for free. So that wiped out all the shipping and I basically got this for $19.95, 20 bucks. So 3 8 ooh, it's got everything here. Oh, how nice. I knew it was going to be a little bit long. T8, again, no torque. Yep. No torque setting on it. Oh, this looks pretty nice. Do I have a paper towel? Let me get one because it's oily. There you go. Oh, it's even got an insert with it. So for twenty dollars, yeesh. Oh, that's some pretty heavy-duty oil. That stuff is thick. <laughs> it's gonna take some oil to dilute this oil. <laughs> Wish it wasn't so long, but this will be interesting to try, and this opens up another world for me, because you see all the larger lays using this type of insert holder, and so I wanted to get one just to see. And this, again, is probably going to open up a bunch of different 
doors, I hope, for um, trying different inserts. I looked through Amazon. There's a bunch of them. This looks like an Ultradex, a traditional type CCMT, I think. But let's see how it works out, guys. I wanted to come back on this because the more I've got it cleaned up and I'm looking at it, this is from China. It's a Grizzly product, but this is really, really well machined. I mean, this is ground. I'm looking at a pretty nice ground finish on this side and this side. Well, even these sides are ground too. So, um, for $20, this is pretty, I'm pretty, I'm very pleased with this guy. And it, like I said, it's going to be really interesting to try this. Let me flip that around so you guys can see. And that, so you can freeze the video if you want to write it down. But, uh, nice. A review of the QRR025-10. It comes in a nice little box, as you can see and the machining in my opinion is beyond excellent it just it is really well done so and it cuts just I mean fantastic here I'll take a little bit of a slice just to show you Puts that groove in there like it were no big deal. And this is without any lubrication at all. But you can see in there what that looks like, I think. I don't know if I can zoom in further. Yeah, it's out of focus. But that is a beautiful, beautiful cutter. All right, there it be. Put it on a nice little table so you can turn it around and see it. <laughs> but this sucker is really flat. It was done very well. And originally when I did all these knobs, because the original ones were terrible, I didn't really have knurling down pat. So I took the opportunity while he, uh, my friend had it and was working on grinding it flat, took the opportunity to redo all the knurls on it so they came out really nice. But I am thrilled with this guy. And this guy, this dovetail is cool because it fits every uh, test indicator I've got. So there it is. Thanks, um, Darren. This, this is perfect. I'm loving this thing every minute of it.